my dear my dear sisters and brothers today's first reading narrates about the first sin how it happened what are the consequences who are the people involved and today's feast reminds us of mary the only human being without sin so we have two women one woman of the old testament the first woman being the cause of sin and we have a second woman of the new testament who is progenitor to a new humanity without sin mary appeared to a poor girl 14 year old girl bernadette on february 11 in 1858 in a small remote village then nobody knew the name today it's called lourdes several times mary appeared over the year and on when she appeared on march 25 I think the third time she declared herself I am the immaculate conception and Mary was asked the name by Bernadette she said I am the immaculate conception <coughs> Of course in 1854 four years earlier Pope had declared Mary's immaculate conception as a dogma of faith We are not sure if this symbol village girl knew that to create this story but in all probability all theologians believe that mary appeared to confirm this faith so here we have a very big question sin and sinlessness what was the first sin in simple terms we say they broke the commandment given by god but at the same time there are a lot of other interpretations for this what is our essential sin it's just walking away from god's presence it's just denying god negating his plan for humanity and man seeking his own plan that's basically what happened in the scene mary is known as the new eve because the first eve was named the mother of all humans and the new eve mary is known as the mother of the new humanity If we compare these two things there are a lot of very very interesting dimensions. The first woman was taken from the side of Adam from man. First woman was born from man actually. And in the new humanity the man is born from the woman. Jesus Christ is the new man and Jesus is often known as the new Adam, the beginning of the new humanity. And Mary as the new Eve, the mother of the christians or mother of all who are redeemed so in the new humanity man is born from woman so actually mary is the progenitor for all humanity in the new testament and it was necessary that to create the new humanity without sin that mary be without sin that's simply the theological reason or theological understanding of the immaculate conception If we compare both Mary and Eve there are a lot of common things. Eve the first Eve said not to God's word. God said don't eat from this particular tree or don't do this. She did exactly the other. We find Mary saying fiat yes to God's word. So the big contrast between these two Eves, the Eve of sin and the eve of sanctity is that mary obeyed god's word ultimately but that is when she was already a human person born and brought up like that 
What about her birth? Church believes that God had a special intervention as God created humanity in the garden the same way God wanted to recreate humanity without sin or without the touch of evil and it had to begin with Mary. So this is a reason why we give so much respect and veneration to Mary. Many Protestants disagree with this. They consider everyone as a sinner except Jesus. But we as Catholics we firmly believe that God made a new creation starting with Mary and uh, Jesus born of Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit. That was humanity without the touch of sin, without the influence of sin is initiated and the possibility is open to us. Now coming to Luth, people go there for mainly sick people go to Luth. It's believed that 6 million people visit Lourdes every year. And it is confirmed that some 7,000 confirmed miracles have happened in these years. And 70 of them are officially recognized by the Catholic Church. Is that all? There are two interesting films on Lourdes. The one came out in 2009, I have seen that. And now last year one new documentary film on came, that's still more interesting. It's running in theatres in America too now. In that film they have interviewed people who got cured or people got a miracle in Lourdes. And the most interesting fact is that people who claimed her miracles, they don't claim physical healing. Most of them said, I'm changed, I'm converted, I'm a new person. People who went on wheelchair, returned on wheelchair without any miracle, but they said, I feel more peace, now relationships are better, I can pray to God now, people love and care for me. So the peace and regaining faith, peace and joy in life, that's the greatest miracle happening in Luth. And this is a great lesson for us. The punishment for sin given to Adam and Eve is sickness, hard labor, pain, and above all, lack of peace. And the blessing through Jesus and Mary is this. It may not be our physical healing. It may not be Liberation from pain, Mary and Jesus are the people who suffered most. But they all were sustained by the consolation of God. So as we pray today, let us pray for God's consolation, peace, hope, joy. These are all gifts of God, spiritual gifts which we can maintain even when we are in the midst of the toughest disease or the greatest pain. So this is a spiritual gift of Lord, I think. And this is a blessing of the New Testament, the new Eve and the new Adam is giving us open this gate to peace, to joy, to hope. And that is what sustains humanity today.